Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our regular meeting of council for March the 1st, 2022. And I call this meeting to order. Before I begin, I just want to mention that uh, in the last week, we've seen the, uh, the horror in, in the Ukraine. And um, it makes me kind of want to reflect a little bit about how lucky we are that we live in, in, in a country where we live today. <clears throat> where government sets laws and, and bylaws by provincial standards and federal standards. We're all uh, entitled under the charter. And we're pretty lucky that way. And it makes me hope that uh, someday maybe the people of Ukraine will have the same. Tonight we get to assemble in this uh, chamber to do exactly what the charter allows us to do. To speak freely of if, if, if something we agree with or we disagree with. And uh, we're pretty lucky that way. And I certainly hope that in, in the coming days or weeks that the Ukraine will see that as well and, um, and they will become a country that they really deserve to be. And, uh, and with that, I say long live democracy and uh, Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Result of the agenda for the March 1st, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the February 15th, 2022 regular council meeting and the February 15th, two, well, what do we got here? Two dates that are wrong here. Uh, February 15, 2022, and that would be February... The special meeting. Oh, the special meeting, right. Okay. Uh, be approved, moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. So we'll move right on to uh, our uh, delegations. And I just want a couple words before that. But for anybody here sitting, while you're sitting, you don't have to wear your mask if you don't want to wear your mask. Uh, when you do get up to speak, you will have to wear the mask too, and then you can sit down and remove your mask. On the conditional use uh, that we had, I just want to acknowledge that uh, council, we have followed provincial uh, procedures that are required for conditional use uh, process, and it has been adhered to. The resolution was therefore tabled at our last council meeting for council to give the opportunity for more information, but also give the public a chance to speak before council once again. Council is aware circumstances regarding the use of the facility on this property have been changed or corrected, which would have an effect on the initi initiation process of the conditional use to allow counseling services in a residential zone. However, your council is aware of this topic and has the public's interest and finds it beneficial to the owner group as well as council themselves to proceed with the delegations. I'll open up the delegations and the proceeds it will proceed as follows. There will be a 30 minute delegation for those who are in favor of the use allowed uh, to address council and also a 30 minute delegation those who are opposed the rules of the delegation is that you must state your name and your address as you make your presentation. One person may speak to council at one time. The person speaking may only be given one chance to speak and to address council. And again, to address council and not anybody else. Each person will be given a maximum of five minutes to address council. We do have other things, we have a lot of people in the room and we do uh, need to proceed with other business as well. Uh, we do want to give everybody the opportunity to speak and, uh, and to be fair for, for everybody. Um, with that, I do also welcome all of you here. It's a great thing, like I said in my opening statement, uh, democracy and, and giving a chance for people to speak. And we welcome you to this chamber because in my opinion, I'm, I'm sure of all the members of council, this is the chamber that also belongs to the people. So with that, I will call the first uh, 
uh, of the 30 minute delegation, which will begin now, and uh, who is in favor. So whoever wants to go first will proceed. A, just a reminder to speak up our mic so everyone can hear on uh, 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 the Zoom. The mic is over here, so please speak up. I can be loud. Am I good to go? Proceed, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so my name is James Wigley. Uh, you would like my residence as per my physical address where I live. Okay, so 1320 Ross Street here in Swan River, Manitoba. And I come before you today to uh, speak about Adult and Teen Challenge in regards to their plans um, of bringing in some services to our community. Uh, the hat that I wear is uh, CEO and Executive Director of the Canadian Mental Health Association, Parkland and the Paw region. I'd like to state for everybody here that as an organization, we are a neutral ground organization. We strongly believe in choice, but we do not side with one religion over another or one political view or over another or one service over another. So what I bring to you is strictly fact that I know from my position within the community to be considered. We all know that we have significant challenges and gaps within our community. We have a huge homeless population that outweighs over 90 individuals at this present time. Within that 90, we see about 20 to 30 individuals walking the streets at any given time with nowhere to go. We know that homelessness stems from many different avenues and is incredibly layered. We know that there is no such thing as a one size fits all when we're talking about homelessness or some of the issues that challenges that come with it, such as substance use and other. And we also know that we continuously receive complaints from community as well as from the individuals themselves that are experiencing this homelessness and the challenges associated with it, that rural zones within our province lack services and the ability to get to services. I bring before you some stats that I've been able to pull together from our community mobilization program, of which we in, uh, increased to the enhanced model in 2021, 22 fiscal year, so this current fiscal year. And please understand that the current stats from that uh, period are not reflected in these. These are prior to the enhanced model. Of that, so prior to this fiscal year, we had a total discussion of 65 individuals come forward. So community mobilization is a group of services, or sorry, an individuals from different services across our community that come together around a table to discuss individuals who present acutely elevated risk. So we had up until this fiscal year with our enhanced model coming in, we had 65 discussions. And this is from January 1st of 2017 until um, it will be uh, March 31st of 2021. So 65 discussions. Of that, 48 involved mental health distress, 46 involved drugs or substance use, and 34 involved housing as being a significant issue as to what these individuals were dealing with. That is one report. Another report states the three highest risk categories across the community service and well-being district, first being mental health, second being drugs and substance use, third being uh, housing. In regards to the high level risk priorities, again, first being mental health, second being drugs and substance use, and third being housing. Of this, the five top resources utilized are the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, Addictions Foundation of Manitoba, Manitoba Family, Employment and Income Assistance, the Albert Chartrand Friendship Centre in regards to their Housing First programming, and the Canadian Mental Health Association, Swan Valley Branch. In addition to this included Public Health, the My Health Team, 
primary health care, and mental health care within Prairie Mountain Health. We as a community cannot stand around complaining about the challenges and gaps that we see and face as a community in one breath, and then in another discredit a potential resource trying to enter to support our community's members. In regards to my, further, uh, my prior point made, where no one size fits all solution will be found for this, I know that this service is not gonna work for certain individuals within our community. I can think of more than 10 that frequent our office that this service will not work for. But I do know that it can and probably work, will work for others. Again, not, no one size will fit all. Current services that are in this community cannot do this work alone. We see continuous increase in service demand and less funding and availability for service provision and expansion. We Mr. must- Mr. Wigley, I'm gonna ask you to wrap up. Because yeah, five absolutely. We must expand our services, whatever that may look like in the future. So finally, I stress to this council to look at the community as a whole when making this decision and decide on what's best for and what advances the community. To think about the larger picture regarding supports and services that our community members need and that what we can implement for when they're ready to reach out for them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next. Okay, so I'm <clears throat> Don Mueller. I live at 45A Cotton Drive. <clears throat> and uh, I'm representing Adult and Teen Challenges to be on their local advisory committee. So thank you for the opportunity to bring additional information and clarity to our ongoing conversation regarding the proposed Adult and Teen Challenge or ATC facility in Swan River here. In the past, whenever I've attended uh, conditional use hearings for the buildings such as the Echo Apartments in Dauphin and Swan River, there have typically been two concerns expressed by the neighbors living in close proximity to the proposed new building. Number one, an increase in riffraff traffic and number two, a reduction of the residential real estate value in that neighborhood. And then sometimes a side note regarding uh, parking concerns. Uh, the consensus of the community has always been that the proposed services are needed and supported. Uh, the only question has been regarding the location from which those services should be offered. So I do understand these two concerns, I really do. And so I welcome this opportunity to offer the following information and clarification. So I'll start with the easy one, the parking. <laughs> the street parking arrangement that this church, as well as the United Church at the other end of the block, have had in the past will continue. Staff parking will be off the back alley on the south side of the building. Uh, number, point number two, uh, the 24 seven operation of this, of this uh, ministry I, I, I realize that that's, that's been quite a concern. And I want to say this, ATC's 24-7 operation will be limited to crisis intervention only. They will not have an open door for 24-7 counseling. Counseling services will be offered during the day. This is not a 24-7 drop-in center or a flop house. Just like any of our other churches, have counseling available during the day. People can walk in there. An example of crisis intervention <clears throat> would be where the hospital could call the ATC uh, on-site staff and ask them to pick up someone at the hospital to talk them through uh, their crisis uh, and then assist them to getting to connected to the appropriate agency the next day. Uh, so I apologize. I want to just say I apologize for the uh, inaccurate information that I presented at the last council meeting and in previous conversations with uh, TSR members, uh, at which time I was up with the understanding that ATC's counseling services would be available 24 seven. 
Had I been clear with the TSR on this 24 aspect of ATC's ministry from the beginning, <laughs> this conditional use hearing may not even have been necessary. <clears throat> uh, since all of the rest of ATC's programs are typical of the programs that any church can offer, without question. This old First Baptist Church was once a going concern with evening activities up to five nights a week. Hard to imagine that now, but it was. And uh, this is also the case with many vibrant churches. They had different programs going for different age groups and so on. Now, this was never questioned. If this church had continued its operations, it would be allowed without question to continue to offer all of its programs, including the programs that ATC is proposing. And uh, herein kind of lies the irony of this whole conversation. <laughs> if we were to leave the ownership of the building with the First Baptist Church, or if we were to transfer the ownership to Community Bible Fellowship Church, which was considered in our early conversations, this conditional use hearing may never have happened. The only reason that it wasn't uh, transferred to Community Bible Fellowship was that the feeling was that it would be uh, better perceptually for the other churches in the valley to say it's not owned by one church and then asking the other churches to gather around and support it. So we said, why don't we just have a neutral party like ATC own it and then all the churches support it. So ATC's ministry in this church will be typical of churches that hold church services as well as various other programs during the week. So I'm not sure, you know, in my five minutes if I can get through everything I've got here or if I even need to. Uh, maybe maybe a lot of what I, the rest I've got to say is a moot point because I think that really changes things a lot, uh, clarifying the 24-7 aspect. Um, I'm not even sure how many minutes I've got left. Has anybody been keeping track there, Lance? About 20 seconds. About 20 seconds, okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, then I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, so again, I apologize for, for bringing uh, about this hearing by misinformation regarding the 24-7. ATC will continue to run a church. It's called Freedom Church. And uh, ATC is even planning a, uh, an, information, an informational dinner uh, to let the, everyone from the community come and hear what they all hope to work on together with other agencies in the community and how they how they hope to to help us out okay thank you uh, uh, dom just before you leave uh council bombic has a question could you give me uh, a, a time of operation which you just proposed through the day is it from eight to four well it'll it'll be typical of any church so, so the, 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 the pastor in, in a church, or in this case here, the ministry couple that are going to be resident in there, they will have their, their regular hours, nine to five or whatever. But like any other church, there could be a youth program on a Friday night and a children's program on Thursday night and a, you know, a men's program. At, you know, there's, there's evening things happen in any church. So I, I want to be clear on that, that the, the counseling is not 24-7. It'll be during the daytime hours that other activities are going on, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, next. <clears throat> My name is Robbie Ahuja. I'm the Chief Development Officer for Adult and Teen Challenge. My address is 8 Castleman Crescent, Oak Bluff, Manitoba. Um, I am a graduate of the, the core program, which is the Live-In Discipleship Program from 15 years ago, which is what a lot of people have heard of Adult and Teen Challenge and who they assume um, the most understanding of Adult Teen Challenge as we're in many countries. So I just um, wanted to um, clarify a couple things. Um, you know, our Teen, Adult and Teen Challenge offers Christ-centered addiction support. Adult and Teen Challenge operates holistic models of recovery. This means that we are concerned with the body, mind, and spirit of those who attend our programs, offering a variety of programs, support for families and friends, expanding our mission to fulfill our mission. And um, I think what happens is 
there's a misunderstanding that happens when people understand adult and teen challenge. What we're um, opening in Swan River is going to be a community office. Our mission is to provide communities, families, individuals freedom from the impacts of life controlling addictions. So our plan for um, this church at First Baptist Church is to be our freedom church um, aspect. So in essence, um, I personally believe that this is no different than what is already going on there. So this would not, none of this stuff would actually be needed where we'd be running a church services and facilities while hiring a ministry manager um, to facilitate these groups and the Sunday night freedom churches that we do. Um, and then what we would do in this community, which we have done in other communities, um, which is a newer thing for Adult and Teen Challenge in like say Dryden or Steinbach or Winkler, is we would then work with the inter-agencies, which we've already started creating relationships with, with all the different groups that work hand together, hand in hand, with all the different resources so that we can be a bridge and a gap to work together and come up with a strategic plan on how we would implement programs in the community, um, which is something that we would facilitate after research and development, not at this place potentially, in the community. So I, I, I think, I just want to reiterate that, I, I, I believe there's some confusion on, you know, what if you Google Adult and Teen Challenge, um, that is not, we are not run, looking at running our core program. So uh, I just want to reiterate that, that I feel like this is not a meeting that is needed. I think there was some miscommunication or understanding. What I do want to say is we are looking forward to doing what we've done in say Dryden and on some of these other communities. I will be posting uh, an alert to every agency, every, whether you're a citizen or a resident, um, we, uh, in Dryden, we had over almost 250 people show up where we did a one and a half hour presentation. We provided a meal. We, we connected. We had a, a poll at the end where we connected with all the different interagencies. And then we did a consensus on what was needed in the city and so that we can offer a holistic approach to help um, people. So I just, that's all I wanted to share. And I want to thank you guys for your time and letting me share that. Well, thank you. Okay. Shannon Reynolds, uh, 340 West Street, Kenville, Manitoba. I know I don't live in Swan River, but I'm a probation officer here in Swan River. I'm not speaking on behalf of Manitoba Justice. I'm speaking just on behalf of my own experience with my clients and with the town. Um, I'm going to agree that we there are gaps, severe gaps. I know this with my clients as I'm trying to get them services. And I know when they come to me and they're ready to get a service, to start counseling, when there's such severe gaps, um, if I can't get them to counseling right away, I've lost them again. It's really important, um, and I believe Teen Challenge does has, have a Ready Now program which is the daytime, it's not the, the other one. I'm gonna add in that I am not from this, from the Valley originally. I did live in Shiloh, so I am from the Brandon area. So I am, I am uh, very aware of uh, Teen Challenge and, and the program there, which is really good. It's a much fuller program, but it, like the services it offers, I've heard a lot of positive things about it. And I've known clients who have attended and done very well. Now it's not one size fits all. As he stated, some people go to treatment counseling, uh, mental health counseling, whatever counseling it is, and it doesn't quite work out and they have to try again and try again. So to not have a service that's offered, I, I was excited to hear that we were going to have another service here. I also, because I'm a probation officer, I don't want you to think that this is all for um, people who are and I'm not going to refer to them as riffraffs, uh, people who are in conflict with the law and land up at my doorstep. The pandemic itself increased mental health issues to the point where people coping also uh, 
or not coping, not helpful coping, started using more alcohol, more drugs, just to cope with all the anxiety, stress, the unintended consequences of um, the isolation, the social distancing, the all the things that came with it. And a lot of people couldn't cope, cope, cope with that properly. Actually in Manitoba in the first year of the pandemic, I think the hospitalizations for substance um, abuse, and that's alcohol and drug, but substance abuse was, I think it raised like 16% higher hospitalization rates for that, which is well above the national average of 5% increase because it's happened all across Canada. I want to add in too that when these things aren't aren't taken care of, when somebody can't get can't get help, there's also unintended consequences of increases of domestic violence, increases of of theft. In the unintended consequence in the end is coming to me or going to the courts or somebody being hurt. That's not always what happens. And I guess I just want to impress that this isn't just about people who are in conflict with the law. These are your neighbors, your relatives, your friends who couldn't cope with things in the last couple of years and are doing the best they can. And maybe they might not want to go to the hospital or to the medical clinic because people all know them. Whereas if you go to a church or somewhere else, you're more anonymous. AFM, we're down to one counselor. We used to have two. We have one now. So I'll be disappointed if if a service is turned away that we desperately need. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, anybody? Uh, good evening, my name is Aaron Murray. I am, my address is 1142 26th Street, Brandon. I'm originally from Binscarth, Manitoba. I'm First Nations. Um, I went through our one year program, which we have in Winnipeg and Brandon. And this program has completely changed my life. I used to be addicted to alcohol, cocaine. I used to be the typical person in a small rural town that was doing nothing <laughs> with their life. I was the blackout drunk guy that had no hope and there was no hope to be found in the Parkland region at that point in time in 2012. And thankfully, there's a program, the one year programs in Brandon, in Winnipeg, and Thunder Bay that exist that I went to from Binscarth. And yeah, it changed my life completely. Um, I can now say that I'm sober, I'm married. I have two beautiful daughters and I'm a homeowner and this program has helped continue to change my life to be a successful person in the community. And this community office is gonna be a great resource for people like me, whether to come to our weekly groups or to enter our long-term programs in Brandon, in Winnipeg. And I think that How can anyone say no or how can anyone oppose that you know um so yeah more than anything i think that um we've seen success in our other community offices in steinbach and winkler in dryden and that's what we want to do here so um at this point in time we're doing monthly freedom church services where someone like me comes out and we invite people from the community if you have a friend, like the last person just said, it's not just riff-raff people, it's your friend, it's your neighbor that might be struggling with an addiction and they can come talk to someone like me who used to struggle with an addiction and we can get them the help that they need. And I think that Adult Open Teen Challenge is gonna be a great resource for this community and we just wanna work with the community of Swan River, with the people, with the different agencies and yeah. All I really got to say. So thanks for your time. Thank you. And congratulations, by the way. Thanks. So we have time for one more. Do you? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, I'm Steve Hansen, and I work in the community. I have property in the community at 127 2nd Avenue North. My daughter rents it. I live in 279 First Street West, Minnetonas. Um, I'm with different committees and organizations within the community. Here tonight, I'm representing community mobilization as the chair of the steering committee. Um, I'm kind of coming on the coattail of James Wigley, and essentially, just want to point out a couple things. Out of the 48 cases that community mobilization uh, that's been presented today that uh, involving mental health, 40, 46 involved drugs, 34 involved housing, 25 involved alcohol, only one was involved in threat to the public. And I'm talking about community mobilization, not talking about the police. <clears throat> this speaks to the fact that there's, there's some serious issues in the way of addictions and basically mental health, essentially addictions and mental health go hand in hand. Uh, what I've seen in general since I've lived here for the last 12 and a half years is the increase and it's relating to addictions, homelessness, and a lot of our homeless people, quite frankly, are hungry as well. So we're getting different beanies for different things and some of it's food and some of it's just to sell. Some for drugs, some for, for food as well. Um, I'm also on the executive of the Swan Valley Interagency. I'm with the business consortium, uh, active participant. I'm with the task forces, trying to address four different issues here in the community. And uh, also with Communities That Care, which is a partnership with our school division and trying to address youth. And we have surveys every couple of years. And I'm just gonna keep mine really short here, just recap again, it's addictions and housing that's really causing those huge issues here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll close that part of the delegation and we'll move on to the uh, those who want to speak that are not in favor. So I'll uh, begin with that. Hi, my name, I'm just going to keep my mask on just because yeah. of where I've been hanging out on the weekends. Um, so my name is Jamie Dvorak and I live at 216 Fifth Ave North and I am speaking on behalf of myself as a resident in the neighborhood and on behalf of some of the other residents, some who are here and some who are not. Um, I'd just like to say that the first night I moved into my neighborhood, my car was broken into. Uh, my garage soon after, there's been many other instances of vandalism and uh, criminal acts that have taken place, which <clears throat> has made us a little sensitive, I'll admit. My purpose for raising this point of order relates to protecting my neighborhood of heritage homes in an area of the community which I and others feel is important to preserve. My concerns relate to safety, quality of life for myself and the other residents, and property values, and I understand there are different different opinions out there about how they're affected by an addiction center. Um, one of the estimates I read was a 3.4 to 4.6 percent reduction in value. Swan River is a historic community that ascribes to heritage and community values, and I understand the proposed facility has been presented as a solution to the increasing crime in the downtown center. Most agree there's been increased risk over the past 10 years. However, it is our position that this proposal will increase neighborhood traffic and pose unnecessary inconvenience, burden, <clears throat> and potential crime in our heritage area, simultaneously increasing burden on some of the business owners and community people who rely on the downtown area. No one is saying this program is not helpful or will not be helpful. An alternative solution could encompass utilizing the former Sunrise House Shelter, located on 4th Street South. There are many other empty buildings in our town. We are more than happy to support the installment of your facility in a location more amenable to the services offered, given the suggested building was formerly used as a crisis stabilization unit by CMHA, meaning Sunrise House. <coughs> This has been proposed as a solution to homelessness. Is it a homeless shelter or a counseling office? <clears throat> if these types of facilities were effective at reducing the crime in our neighborhood, 
Why was the red road compass vandalized? Hospital referrals, which is where I work, typically are not to religious bodies. They are to other facilities that are part of the Prairie Mountain Health Region or Winnipeg Health Region or other health regions. My main point has been and will continue to be that none of these individuals physically reside in our, prop, in our residential street and their opinions will understandably and predictably be different because they do not. I will say it again, we as a community are not saying we don't want people to receive help. We are proposing that you choose another location. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I may speak, I can, can I speak? Oh yeah, go ahead, sure. Uh, my name is George Vanderbilt. Uh, I, I'm the owner, property, property owner of Fifth Avenue 211. Uh, I'm currently in Brandon and that's why I'm on uh, Zoom. Um, Mayor and Deputy Mayor and Councillors, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. And uh, Mr. Mayor, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, I think I've, I had a long speech here for more, on five, more than five minutes, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it down to what I think is the essence of this issue. I do not have a problem that there is a church that wants to have a church service in a church building that's zone for you. Okay? Because the viewer said that the property will just be used from 9 to 5. I do not believe that it's just going to be 9 to 5. Why is there a counselor have to sleep over? in the property. Other churches do not have anybody sleeping over. Okay? So I have a problem with that issue there. What is going to happen if that counselor that's sleeping over there at 2 o'clock in the morning somebody's knocking on his door? Are you going to open the door and let him sleep there? Is there going to be 20 homeless people sleeping over there? Are you going to feed eat them? So it's not turning into a counseling service now, but now it becomes a homeless shelter. And I believe Swan River needs all these things. Get me right. I believe we need a homeless shelter. We need a place where people can go and get a good food, warm socks, and have a bag. I believe that. But I do not believe that a church building have to be used for that if it's going to be 24, 7 days a week in a residential area. There's other properties, as all the other people said, there's other properties that can be used for this. So my problem is this answer or the question that we have is, the, the question has not been answered. Why do people have to sleep over there? The counselors have to sleep in that church? And what is the situation if somebody knocks on there at two o'clock in the morning, are they gonna open the door and let that person come in? Because that's gonna create traffic, that's gonna create and not the residential area that everybody wants. So that, that question I have to be answered before you guys can make a decision about this. Is this going to be 24 7 and why do somebody have to sleep over there? Nobody that goes to, nobody, I don't know if any church in Swan River, I've been to every single church in Swan River, nobody sleeps over in the church. My, my, my pro problem is that questions have to be answered. And then the second thing is, this is a residential area. There is too many unanswered questions here that as a counselor, if I was a counselor, I will not be able to make the decision tonight because there's too many unanswered questions. These questions have to be answered first and it have to be clear what that property is gonna be used for. If you say it's a church, then it should be a church. If it's a counseling service, then get in another place where you can counsel people 24 7 a day, but not a church in a residential area. My question to you, town councillors, this tonight is would any one of you want the facility where it's going to be 24 7, anybody can walk in at any time next to your private home where your children are playing and your grandchildren are playing? And I'll say it again. There's too many unanswered questions that has not been answered by this application to make a clear decision if this is right to do or not. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
next. Hello, everybody. Hi. Happy birthday, Lance. Thank you. Um, like we said, you all know. We are Jim and Denise Ashcroft yeah. from 213 Fifth Avenue North. Thank you. Same household currently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. As you know, I deal with this. Of course, you know I'm a teacher at the high school, and this, some of my students are in these situations. No one is saying we don't need this. No one is saying on the street that this isn't a good idea. I am saying I do not want this on my street. I do not want the traffic. I do not want the other things that come with it. To me, when the proposal is, it sounds like it's a great idea and it sounds like a business to me. Now there's three people on the street that own businesses, including me, who has yes been broke into, as you all know. However, if that was built beside my place, I'd have no problem uptown. And yes, it's a block away, but it is my home. And I would like to keep it my home where I work outside all the time. I'm sure all of you know that because I'm always in my yard. And I wanted to keep it like that. And that's basically it. It sounds like a business and a business needs to be uptown. I just want to add again, like we don't want to be construed as the street that doesn't want this service in our community. Everything they offer, it sounds like they are going to offer is a fantastic thing. Whatever this is, as it starts out, whatever it evolves into, I just want to say that in the since the last meeting, Denise and I and other uh, neighbors on our street have talked to the majority of the councillors around this table, which I might add, on our street during any given election, all of your signs or most of your signs were on our front lawns. And and in speaking with the councillors over the past couple of weeks, the majority, a large majority, either agreed that they would not want this on their street. And some even said those words, they wouldn't want it on their street. Why would you want it on ours? And I think there's just gotta be more investigating on another location, a different spot. Probably nice areas in Kenville. I don't know, but that's that's our our issue is location, not the fact of what what they do. So that's all. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone further? I'm Sherry Fedor. I work at Community Corrections. I'm a probation officer as well, but I also live on 217 Fifth Avenue North. Um, we have had incidents at our home that we have had actual people go in when we weren't home and we end up going home at one o'clock in the morning and there's someone sleeping in our basement. So I know that we need this in our town for sure. I work with clients every day that have addiction issues. I also have own family members that have addiction issues that I, you know, we, everybody's struggling, but to put it on a residential street, I don't feel is a good idea. Most of us work during the day, which means foot traffic in front of our house is going to be when we're at work. So who's protecting our properties while we're at work? if all this traffic's going past our houses. And most people that I know with addiction issues don't have vehicles, so they're going to be walking through our yards and wherever while we're not around. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I'm not saying it's not a good idea. It's a great idea. And we definitely need it in our town. And like I said, I have own family members that have addiction issues that need the help. 
I'm not saying that this shouldn't be in our town. I'm saying that it just should not be in a residential area. And like they said, would any of you want it in your backyard? I have grandkids that come over and play at my in my yard every day. And I have kids that are living at home. Like we shouldn't be afraid to leave our properties during the day because we're gonna have the traffic going past our house constantly. We have enough as it is now. So I just want to voice that. And I'm also, I also sit on the hub, so I do know the stats and I know that we need it. I just don't feel that it should be in a residential area where people have kids playing outside and whatever. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying I don't want it. I really do. That's all I have. And happy birthday, Lance. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any? Uh, do we have anybody else? Councillor White's hand up. Councillor White, you had a question, sorry? Uh, I think you're on mute. Well, I'm just appreciating that much. I'm very thank you for asking. Okay. Um, no, I see. Okay, oh, sorry. thank you. Uh, any, uh, anyone further? We can take two more. Uh, if none. Um, not to put uh, the gentleman uh, that's the CEO of Teen Challenge on the spot, but um, we do have some time. Maybe if uh, he would like to speak, since we do have a few minutes left. Uh, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Pastor Daniel Iman. Uh, yeah, I went through the Adult Teen Challenge program 15 years ago. Uh, before that, I was in jail. Uh, my dad diagnosed, my dad was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease when I was in my first year of med school at U of M. And uh, my life fell apart. And um, I tried everything. I tried every resource that there was. And it wasn't until uh, I met someone at a coffee shop that had gone through this, this organization through Adult Team Challenge um, where I found hope. And I wanna make it very clear tonight to the town of Swan River that our mission, our organization is to put hope within reach of every community, every family, including every resident on Fifth Street, with the love of God and the transform, transforming power uh, and hope that we found. And I honestly do believe that um, wherever we go, we bring um, that healing power, that presence to communities and it becomes a safer place, it becomes a place where people don't want to commit crime, they want to go to church, they want to go to work. And so thank you for having us tonight because, and for letting me share that because we are educated, we have done our homework, and this is not the first hearing that we've sat at and heard these exact same concerns. Actually, the first Adult and Teen Challenge Center in Winnipeg went through this very similar, these very, all these exact same concerns. Traffic, unsafe, uh, why do we have to do it? You know, why do we have to do it on a, in a residential area? The question, I guess, is um, back is, is that what do you think we're doing that's different than like than a church? Because really what the church is, is, is a group of people. I'd like to answer the one question from the gentleman on the screen about he doesn't understand why we need to live in the in the building. Well, and that no churches in Swan River. Well, many churches in the model of what we use is the best model or the best practice is that the actual couple or the ministry manager, the pastoral couple, the worker becomes part of the community and knows the neighbors and serves the neighbors and is part of the community barbecues 
and is actually part of the community making it a better, safer place. That's why we believe that the person should live on the site. And we have many churches in Winnipeg that clergy people live at the building. They make it their home. They protect it like every other home on the block. So it actually becomes a much safer place. And what they find, back to the story of Winnipeg, when we first got our building 1998-99, it was actually the mayor that was opposed. Mayor Glenn Murray at the time was opposed of Adult Teen Challenge Teen Challenge coming to downtown Winnipeg, there was a church, a United Church with a daycare, and they were very concerned that the kids at the daycare would be impacted by all these drug dealers and gang members that were coming in. And so Mayor Murray had a meeting just like this and found out that we had an adult and teen challenge center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so well, he, when he found that out, he said, actually, I'm personal friends with the mayor of Minneapolis, I'm going to call him. And he picked up the phone, Mayor Glenn Murray called the mayor of Minneapolis, got him on the phone. And the mayor of Minneapolis said, if you have Teen Challenge willing to come into your community, you better do everything that you can to get them there. And after that, they gave us the apartment building right downtown, right beside the daycare. And we've been running a successful program ever since. And I have a second chance at life because of that program. So I want to assure you that we will <laughs> make the community a better place. That the family, the ministry, people, we're hoping are actually from this community that would move in to that. They might even have a house already, but they would actually move into that building and make that apartment suite their home. That they would make it a mission to make the community a safer and better place. Another thing that I'll say is, is that we have enough work to do. And <laughs> um, there's many other communities, Thompson, Flynn, Dauphin, that are asking us to come in. We feel very strongly that God has awarded us this opportunity. And even the way that we got this building, we didn't choose to be in this building. And we want to respect and honor the community in every way possible. So if we say that we're going to do something, that's what we're going to do. If we tell you that we're not going to offer 24 seven services there, we will not do that. If the ministry couple is living there, they're there to have a home, to sleep, to have boundaries, to have a life outside as well, not work 24 seven. But let me ask you a question. Council, if someone that you knew called you, tried to commit suicide or had a really mental, a really bad mental health breakdown and they were at the hospital and they needed you to go pick them up at two in the morning and get them some coffee and get them some food and love on them and get them into a facility the next day or two, would you bring them home and do that? Would you take care of your, would, would you take care of a loved one or a family member or someone that reached out to you? That's all we're saying we want to do. We want to do that to this community. We want to be that family to this community and help the one person, one family at a time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. All right, well, uh, <clears throat> I think we had time for one more if there's uh, any other polls at all. If not, I will conclude this. All right, so again, I thank each of you for making your presentation in, in the way that you wanted. And, uh, and also thank all those people that are working hard to help individuals in our communities and other communities in the province and in this country. And those who are also the survivors and, and, uh, and have moved on in, in, in good ways. And uh, I congratulate you too. can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I was just commenting and just saying thank you for everybody to coming out tonight. and. Uh, and thank everybody to speak how they want to speak, either opposed or, or for, but also to congratulate those who have are the survivors of, of, uh, of uh, substance abuse or addictions and, and, and where they are today and their lives. And, uh, and, uh, and I thank also those who are working hard to 
uh, make this a, a better place as well. Okay, so then I'll close this part of the, uh, the meeting. You know, that's right. I'll just wait. Maybe I'll let counselors speak then, and then if they have anything to say. Yeah, I guess I'll speak while everybody's still here because I don't know when we're dealing with the actual question. Right. But, uh, you know, I this last week I've thought a lot, a lot about the, about this uh, coming up, and I, I missed last last uh, meeting two weeks ago, but I watched the Zoom video twice over, and I had phone calls from from people, and and you know what, I was probably one of those ones that told you, Denise, that I wouldn't want it next to me, and and you know what, I, I do have concerns, I did have concerns. I'm like I'm like everybody else. It's a great thing, but I don't. I I I can totally empathize with the people of the neighborhood. I, I probably wouldn't want it right next to me and my children, but I thought uh, I need to see what the law says. The law being the Planning Act, because what we have in front of us is, is a land use planning issue. Um, so I see what the Planning Act is and what our what our town bylaw says. And uh, as as was alluded to earlier in uh, in the presentation uh, from the proponent, I came to the same conclusion. We already have a religious institution on the site. And the application is for a religious institution. And when I read further in the bylaw, a land, a, a, a land use, uh, conditional use, runs with the land. It doesn't run with the owner. It doesn't. It doesn't end when the when the land changes hands. So this really isn't about teen challenge. It's not about addictions or crime. And I know this may this may sound like it's uh, you know uh, tone deaf because this is this is your neighborhood. But the council needs to approach this, and, and council is going to the other members of council are going to approach it however they want. But we don't necessarily have the luxury of doing anything other than what the what the act says and what the bylaw says. And so this is really a question of is it appropriate to have a religious institution at this site? There's been a religious institution at this site probably since the 1960s, I'm assuming. So it's it's the question of, is it is it appropriate for it to continue? And it also begs the question, how did this even come about? And I understand because because of, it was the 24-7 aspect, which has since been retracted. So that almost leads me to the belief, the same belief uh, uh, as Mr. Bueller of, we they almost have what they need to, to go about what they want to do according to the bylaw. And now we can't, we can't uh, make rules based on what we wish the bylaw said. It has to be based on what the bylaw actually says. And, and Teen Challenge could come this week and, and a month from now fold, and this land will still be zoned. It'll still have a conditional use for a religious institution. And that's the question before council tonight. Is it appropriate for this land to be a religious institution? Yes or no? And if yes, is there any conditions council needs to put on it? Um, so again, I'll fully admit, I was probably one of the ones that told you that. And, and I do have those concerns, but from what I read and what the parameters around the decision council has to make tonight that that's where we're at is it's not so much a, a you know what i don't think anybody in this room is going to doubt that we have addictions issues in this community we need help with those whether it be from a religious organization whether it be from a government organization uh anything like that but this this is outside of the question being asked of council the question being asked of council is what is the appropriate use of this land so I guess that's that's where I'm at. That's where my thoughts will be tonight when it comes time to make a, a decision. Um, you know, I I have a gut instinct, and then I went to what the what does the act say? What does the bylaw say? And I guess I, I just wanted to say that while everybody was here tonight, because I, I want to face that head on as far as where my thoughts are uh, going into this decision tonight. Thank you. Uh, any other member of council wants to speak? Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, and I'll, again, I'll close this part of the uh, of the uh, delegation. Thank you, everybody. We'll just give everybody a few minutes here to. I almost feel like we should sing that birthday. Thanks, Jay. Hey, wait. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shell. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. You guys are going to be watching. All right? Yeah, no. Councillor White.
Yeah, I have to do a little medical procedure here, so I'll be away for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, so we can move on then. Uh, over here. 4.3. Resolve that the regular meeting of council be suspended and further that the public hearing for zoning amendment bylaw 3 2022 be called <coughs> to order at 7 30 p.m. Right on time. Look at that. Moved by Councillor uh, Gloria, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so we'll move on. Do I have a. Do I have that sheet for the. Adhere to the. Yes. Just give us one minute. We just have a formality here that we have to read through. <clears throat> I just say it's, it's quite hard to hear you back here. I'm sorry. There must be that furnace, and I should have remembered yeah. to speak up a little bit more. So, my apologies. Thanks for whoever got after me to speak up. Jack, I think. Yeah, I think it is this fan making this noise. Yeah. Yeah. 
back. 3.22 to change the lane. Uh, this is his intent. That's what you do here. Intent. And you know the rest of it? Then? Yeah. Okay. okay, our apologies, uh, but uh, we can proceed now uh, to the um, zoning amendment bylaw 3 2022. So I call it to, to the hearing to order for uh, use application number 3 2022. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use sections. Requirements of 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. So that is on, we missed that here, Derek. The, the town's, uh, the intent for over here, to change the zoning bylaw, to change the zoning of the three lots from RS6 to RT to allow for duplex housing. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. Mr. Gray? Welcome. Good evening, Cocklers. Mr. Mayor, CAO of the CAO. Oh, Director of uh, um, uh, Public Works. I apologize. And those on, on the camera as well. I have with me as well Francis Chartrand, who's the uh, Vice President who in charge of the Northwest Media Council, the owner to answer any representative questions as well or to speak later. I don't know if there's anybody who's registered, but it's my understanding from Mr. Poole that there was no one who's registered to speak against, so I don't propose to be lengthy. I think our application is fairly complete as to the reasoning. Um, we went through the bylaw before we acquired the properties, made sure that the sizing was sufficient. Um, because it's adjacent to existing land, there's additional space if, there, if that's necessary for any occupancy purpose. Um, and having empty lots on that street can't possibly be an advantage. And it doesn't, there is nothing that would suggest in any of the materials that I've seen that the residential capacities, uh, which is the other criterion in the, uh, both in the bylaw and in the planning act, Councillor Glory, um, that suggests that if, unless there's an overload on, on the uh, infrastructure, that would be another reason. So there are none of those uh, issues. There's been no uh, material opposition. Uh, I can't imagine anybody thinks that having vacant lots um, in the middle of their street is an advantage as opposed to having them filled with other facilities. We know that there is a housing shortage of sorts uh, in Swan River. Um, not all of that housing shortage will be fulfilled by these new units, I, I would think. But I do point out that there is a significant employment that will come from that. Minister Chartrand is responsible for uh, daycare uh, construction, early childhood learning across the province. The Mantua May Federation is, is building 19, 19 units across the province, one in this community almost completed. Um, there will be quite a large number of staff in that, which increases our capacity in the community. And of course, uh, we don't have a lot of trained uh, people that would be able to fulfill those positions. So we expect some of those positions will be from people outside of the community. Having close housing will make that much easier, especially for single parents. And so from our perspective, this fills a number of needs. It fills needs in the community, it fills needs in the for the residents, and it fills, it fills needs for the daycare that we're constructing. So subject to any questions, I, I, I don't know if there's more that you want from me, but uh, as I said, I think our application was fairly complete. Okay. Certainly more complete than many of this I've seen previously. <laughs> any questions? Councillor uh, Morio. Um, I didn't see it. Uh, I know it's three lots that you acquired there. Is yeah. it going to be a duplex on each lot? Yes, that's the plan. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Well, yeah, that's what we want the zoning to. I don't know that there will be. That's a little presumptuous, I guess. The intention is to build a duplex on each um, lot, um, and and we've sort of got a general design uh, or common uh, common roadways and so on to minimize traffic. Perfect. Any further questions? Councillor Bobby? Will this, by doing this zoning, if it passes, will this set a precedent on other areas or not? How, I think uh, there's already a precedent set yeah. for a set of, of, of duplexes that were allowed under zoned over there. So that, zoning uh, is its own entity. Yeah. I'll let Mr. Harvey respond. Okay. 
Yeah, that would be my answer. Everyone is its own, and there is other examples where this has been done, where it's been changed to RT uh, to allow B buses. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything further? Okay. You're, you're good there, then. I'm, I'm good unless okay. you have other questions. I all right. Good. Okay. Well, then, if that's sure it, then Minister Sharptran. I just want to thank you guys for having us here. I've been here for quite a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Just, <laughs> just, just, just the start of our development in the town of Swanerburg. And um, we're looking at senior housing, and we're looking at, my big goal is to look at student housing. We met with the school division last night, and we talked about um, doing trades and programming, and the shortage of housing that you have here for any anybody to come into uh, the town of um, the Paz Evident, and you know as council, you guys probably do your labor market information and your uh, percentage of uh, housing that's not available for people to come in. So that what we wanted to do is we want to make that little avenue in all that area to make sure that we have senior housing. We're looking at some student housing and for employment for our daycare that's being built. There'll be about 12 to 15 jobs that will be fully secured, full time jobs. So we, look, we always look at local contractors. We look at leaving all the money in the community. And then we had COVID-19. So people are not understanding the importance of daycares and the importance of nurses and housing and what we need in our small communities. Everyone looks at um, the city of Brandon or the city of Winnipeg. They never look past the perimeter. So what we want to look at is um, building up the valley, making sure that there's a good place for our Métis citizens and citizens of Valley alone. I want to say happy birthday. Well, thank I'll you. Thank you, you present or <laughs> You guys don't use our cheapskates. <laughs> so thank you. Much. So, but, so but, subject only to any opportunity to reply if there's opposition. Um, those are the only comments I think we have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chartrand, and, and welcome back to Swan River. And we do uh, uh, appreciate your vision and, uh, and look forward to working with you and, and your organization and, or government as well. Thank you. And um, I just met with our lawyer today. We're going to go through the agreement regarding the road and everything. So we we'll start moving on doing our um, our vision for that area. I don't, I don't know if you guys heard, but we have a partnership with the PAW. We're investing $10.2 million in a daycare and housing in the next two years. And they're buying our road. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Result of the Thank public you. hearing for zoning amendment bylaw 3 2022 be closed and further the regular meeting of council be resumed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. Um, Mr. Poole, I was just wondering if we could move the resolution for uh, 1 into this spot right now so that we can read it and um yeah let me just find it and then we'll move it up okay so that's really easy. <clears throat> Refresh it is four point five. Okay, four point five. Resolve the application for conditional use number one, two thousand and twenty two, to allow a religious institution that offers counseling services in RS five zone be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Morio and then Delorier. Um, I guess throughout my entire time on council and secondary, this is the first time I've seen council chambers this full on a specific issue. Um, so it's, uh, it was good to see that there was that interest uh, for that. Um, and from when I first listened in, on last council meeting when the uh, hearing was there um, to now I was contacted by many people for and against I had my opinions for and against back and forth it was an emotional um, roller coaster back and forth but uh, 
I had to come to the conclusion that I have to take emotion out of the picture and see what the bylaw and the laws say. Um, and quite frankly, um, there is no decision to be made because it is there. The conditional use does carry on from one owner to the next. It stays with the property. So um, basically there, there is no decision to be made in my mind. One has to leave the emotional aspect out of it, as Council Dory uh, mentioned uh, during the delegation phase. Um, we have to follow the rule of law and the bylaws that we have in place. Uh, there's no, uh, we can't put emotion in, into that. Um, we have our own personal opinions, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for following the bylaws that we actually put in place ourselves. So uh, I think it's incumbent upon us to follow those bylaws that we put in place. And until those bylaws change, like I said, there's no decision to be made, but we need to proceed. Okay, thank you. Council Dory. Um, you know, I, I've already said once once before already, basically what Councilor Moria says, I, I really don't think that there's a decision to be made here for the fact that they already have a condition of use. There was a church there for 50 years. There's, there's gonna be a church there going forward it's it it's already uh has the use it needs um and i understand this is brought forward to us by administration because it was the uh you know the 24 7 aspect of it ch changed the use in administration's position and i and i respect that for, for them bringing it forward to council that's what we're here for but uh in light of the fact that that the proponent has said that there will be no 24 7 counseling services offered i they they already, in my opinion, they already have what they need. And again, I'm just one counselor. So I guess if a resolution is being put forward tonight that, that we're giving them conditional use for uh, a religious institution, then I'll be voting in favor of it because I think they, I think it's a mute point. They already have it. Um, and I guess my, my trepidation comes from a, a place of concern of, from, you know, you know the, the people against it you know, wanted us to put them in their own shoes of, of, uh, of would, would you want this next to you? And, and my trepidation, I have young children. Um, you know, you don't want your young kids exposed to, you know, you try and shelter them. So home is a place where you shelter them. And so that, that's where my trepidation comes from. My trepidation didn't come from a place of, I don't want this in the community because I think like everybody has said that our community desperately needs this. We have severe addictions issue, which, you know, as, as the mental health professionals in, in the room tonight and the probation officers and everybody else alluded to, we have severe issues in our community that this place would uh, would help out with. Um, so it, I don't I, I wouldn't want people to take it the wrong way that, that we don't want this in the community. I think I think we do. And I think according to uh, a, if it's a land use question being put in front of it, in front of us tonight, then the answer is clear. They're already able to do what they want to do, in my opinion, and I'll be voting accordingly tonight. Deputy Van Owen-Doney. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I guess two points from me. The first one is specifically the conditional use and, and what we look for and, and uh, what the role is of council uh, of council here. And I'm not going to repeat what uh, Councillor Morio or Delorier have said. And, and that is uh, that the conditional use is already there. And that is something that has been established long before I've been on council and will continue to be part of of this piece of property unless um, zoning will be changed. And for that, I, I mean, it is what it is um, for the land use. The second piece is um, having adult and teen challenge in, in our community. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to, to everyone who did have an opportunity to speak for and against. And of course, I'm well adversed into um, what our community has, what we need. Um, as part of the task force and many other committees that I'm, I'm with and a part of, I understand fully of, of what we need. And um, I just want to say that uh, any services that we can add to the growing um, or to the agencies that we have within our valley, within our community is outstanding. And we should never look at, uh, at, uh, at someone wanting to come in and look at it as being pushed away or anything of that sort. The second piece is that I, I believe a lot in uh, the word of 
what we say. And for those of us and those of you who believe in the word, the word is as, is as important as anything else. And when you, when you agree to uh, some of the things, um, um, Daniel, that you stated there, um, that you agree or that your word is that you are going to take care of the community, I think in my mind that's what, what those people on that block need to hear. Um, and the question, I guess, that was asked, would I want that on my street? And if you were to tell me that uh, that uh, you were going to protect that piece of property and everyone and, and include those people in, uh, from that community on that block and, and create a safe place, I would trust you and I would believe you in that. And for that, that is my uh, my personal side of the opinion. That's not what, he, what we're here to um, to deliberate or not, but that is my side um, to speak. Now, I, I think as we vote on this, you will have your answer, and then perhaps there's more work to do within within the community. And I urge you to continue to have those conversations with community, with the community, with those on that block, um, if it were to be approved here tonight, and uh, encourage and show what what your organization will do with that with that space. Thank you. Anybody further? Councillor Bobbitt? I just to speak a bit on this is when I first heard of this, I was almost I made the statement that I would be voting against this. Actually, I would like to thank Councillor White, Councillor Moria for your statement, Councillor White for tabling this to, to enabling us to get more information and look at this at a at a different aspect. Uh, some of the stories that were told here uh, tonight. And the need for this in the Swan River outweighs this stuff. Personally, right now, if you could want to put it inside my house, I would take it. I think there's such a need in this town. And everybody should step up to the plate. And if you got to put it by your place, put it by your plate. At the same time, hopefully Team Challenges involves the neighborhood, gets them involved with them, works together, and makes it a shining star. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody further? <clears throat> Okay, so then I'll ask the question. All in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? It's carried. Okay, so moving on, 4.6. Result of the regular meeting council be suspended and further that the public hearing for zoning amendment bylaw 7 2022 be called to order at 7.53 p.m. Moved by... Councilor Morio, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. It's carried. You guys, if you want to leave, you can leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I call the uh, hearing to order your conditional use application number. 7 2022 the purpose of the hearings here represent representation for or against the following conditional use to rezone the 500 block first avenue south from ml light industrial to mh industrial heavy as shown uh, on our map okay mr pool you're next uh the sections of the requirements of 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered, adhered to. Okay. To requ I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. Uh, we did not get anybody registered. So. Okay. Is there any discussion? Did those gentlemen have it here for? Okay. Are you here for the uh, the rezoning? No. I, yeah. Well, that's we put it in for the rezoning. Okay. Not, not this one, the next one, I believe. Oh, okay. Is this one, this one isn't for uh, First Avenue South? Oh, no, sorry. Okay. 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 Wrong one. <laughs> okay. So is there any discussion on that or any questions? <coughs> Councilor Bobbick? Uh, just a question on why is it happening? <laughs> uh, these lots were purchased by a, a local company and they, they want to develop it into a seed storage facility now and eventually it will become a processing facility which would require uh, industrial heavy zoning the the 
the property around it is light industrial, so the you know, administration didn't have any opposition to this. Uh, the, I guess the, the use, the specific use from what we've been told by uh, the owners is that it will be used for seed storage now, but in the future, eventually, uh, some sort of processing. Thank you. Councilor, uh, do you, you want to respond to that then? Or? I was just going to add that, yeah, some sort of processing, they haven't determined exactly what, and there still would be an ML buffer between a residential zone and this new zone. Okay. Councilor Morio. Was asked and answered. It was the same oh, question. Okay. So anything further? Okay. Be it none, upon hearing all persons present, uh, I do adjourn uh, this meeting. 4.7. Oh, I'm in the wrong place here. That was 7 uh, 2022, wasn't that what I was just doing? Yeah. Uh, 7 2022. You should be on 4.7. Yeah. Result of public hearing for zoning amendment bylaw 7 2022 be closed. And further, the meeting of the council be resumed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Bobic. All in favor? Carried. 4.8. Result of the regular meeting of council be suspended. And further, the public hearing for conditional use to 2022 be called to order at 757 moved by councillor delorier seconded by councillor white all in favor it's carried i call the uh, order the hearing for conditional use number two 2022 sorry i'm just gonna <coughs> the purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following uh, conditional use. This isn't a zoning amendment, so the sections don't have to be. Here. Oh, I don't have to do that part. Okay, sorry. I'm just on a roll here, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, what do we have here? Basically, we still open up to the public, so we just skip that. Uh, oh, the the one the, the one line. Okay. So then uh, I request that any persons making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. Bell, you can come if you want to speak. <laughs> I'm Dale Wojciech, and we were trying to get a conditional use for my lot uh, just next to an opportunity. This is my son, Mitchell. He's uh, looking at setting up a machine shop, which is milling machines, lathe work, stuff like that. And I think that falls under the manufacturing category. I'm not sure what. Uh, Mr. Harvey? Yeah, it requires a conditional use for a machine shop, so that's why they had to apply. Yeah. Okay. Council Bobbitt. Why is that? It's in the zoning bylaw. Machine shops are a conditional use in the zone. Because right now it's highway commercial. Yeah, and right that's now. a requirement, yeah. Okay, anybody further? Okay, anything further? Oh, sorry, Councilor Morio. Um, just looking at that, uh, which building, is it the Boyd building on the highway? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, anything further, Mr. Boyd Chuck? Nothing, okay. Then if that's all it, then I'll close the, the hearing. Result of the public hearing for conditional use to 2022 be closed and further the regular meeting of council be resumed. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Council Delorier. All in favor? Carried. Did you want to move that resolution? Yeah, so where, where about is it? It's 8.1, but I can move it. Okay, yeah, let's move it so that these guys don't have to wait. Resolve the application for conditional use number two, 2022, be to allow 
a machine shop in a commercial highway zone be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. It's been approved. Okay, that's good. Okay, done deal. Go. Thank you. Steve, you want. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Yeah. 7.1 Resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2 Resolve that the January 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received. Moved by or, uh, Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3 reports. Start with uh, Councillor Bobbitt. Thank you, Mayor Jacobson, and a happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. you Just I'm overwhelmed you today. You don't look anything near 60. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I uh, attended a cow meeting. We talked about uh, snow dumping sites and there's a change to where they'll be dumped on public reserve. I give uh, management credit for jumping right on that and getting it done really quick. Thank you very much for that. We had a small discussion on some equipment uh, that's coming up to be uh, purchased in the near future. Um, kind of stepped over some hurdles there. Uh, the Swan Lake. Watershed Board has uh, granted us usage of their grizzly, which will save the town of Fawn River some initial costs of uh, buying a so-called bucket to uh, conquer that issue. But we'll uh, see what happens. If it works fine for the town, then it will be great. Um, some of the questions I have here for uh, Fire Chief Kadorchuk for these on there. Yeah, uh, he's not here. Okay, well, next meeting. Um, Director for Dorchuk. Yeah, there he is. Uh, just to, if you could give me a brief explanation of the schedule for the wellness center that there's 40 hours of book time through the week and uh, four hours of public swimming that are allowed. If you could briefly describe that, how do we get to that conclusion? Uh, yeah, so uh, we have more private rental slots open. Our staff availability is uh, mainly in high school kids, so we really have to program before before school and after school, uh, which leaves us limited time to have public rentals and, and offer private rentals as well. Um, we did offer private, uh, public uh, swimming during the summer on Fridays and on uh, Saturday evenings. Fridays were not well attended, so we elected to uh, terminate that public swim, uh, and then uh, yeah, just offering more public private lessons, more public swimming lessons, and more private rentals. Okay, thank you. Uh, would there be something like your scheduling? Is it, is it an ongoing thing that uh, now that COVID seems to be coming to an end, would that be something that would be looked at in the future that maybe there's a possibility of more public swimming coming in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So right now we're programming based on demand. Um, so if we end up getting attendance uh, overwhelmingly at all the swims, uh, we will be expanding those swims. We are trying to do a Saturday evening swim like we previously did in the summer. Uh, right now, unfortunately, we're just dealing with staff shortage uh, shortages still, uh, but we're working on hiring additional staff members out of our SV, uh, SVRSS lifeguard program to help with that need. And yeah, we will be trying different things. Um, we just mainly we want to make sure that the pools, uh, the lifeguard hours are being used as efficiently as possible. Uh, so we just want to program to that demand. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, just uh, if I could uh, ask a question to Deputy Mayor Wintoni, that uh, moving forward with the team challenge here, would there be something that COPP could be looking at to maybe at the date of operation start there that that could be steered towards that area to reassure the ratepayers that live in that area that there would be some involvement 
in COPP? Yeah, ab absolutely. And um, that's something that we can definitely, that I can bring back to our our group and, and share that information and just ask for extra patrols to be held in, in that neighborhood for sure. There's no doubt about that, that what you're asking is something that we can we can do. We often get requests for certain areas uh, within the neighborhood and within the community for extra patrols and I don't see that that is an issue whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Uh, just while we're speaking to COPP, I would just like to remind Council that there has been a challenge issue that uh, you need $100 to get involved in this. So from at my next meeting, I will be taping my challenge that I got from Deputy Mayor when Tony there, and it was greatly appreciated. And I'd like to see how fast the rest of them go up. So just to keep that in mind, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor uh, White. Sorry, I, I just... Can I add one quick thing to maybe Councillor Bobic? I just wanted to say, Councillor Bobic, that that uh, your certificate looks very nice, and I'm glad that you have one. Uh, I, I didn't get an opportunity to print anything for any other councillor, but a hundred dollars will get them that beautiful certificate. Normally, we don't love grandstanding, but <laughs> uh, Councillor White. And you don't like the thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor White. Uh, last, is there a fine for that kind of stuff about that council meeting? <laughs> Perhaps. <clears throat> uh, it's, been, uh, it's been really quite hectic, and with the, with the help of Uriah, specifically with uh, yourself, your worship, and uh, everybody in the office has been remarkable that this last week's been crazy. Uh, on the 16th, the PMH uh, met with us, and just to remind us all that the, the uh, COVID is still out there. And uh, to quote the chair of the uh, CEO of Prairie Mount Health, Brian Schoenberg, the uh, CT scan is still a priority for PMH, uh, regardless of what was stated in the paper where some individual in PMH had been quoted. And that did not come from the uh, president, the CEO. Uh, we met with the cabinet ministers on the 17th. Uh, I had the pleasure of sitting with Minister Clark and uh, a wonderful presentation a uh, good presentation, but the topic is sort of if be relative to crime, uh, your worship, you and others uh, spoke that so well. And then we also talked about the CT scan, and uh, Minister Clark was very impressed with the fact that there's a possibility of a significant hunk of money coming from the community, which is sitting in the, uh, the foundation bank account right now. And she was going to follow it up with a meeting with uh, Ian Sharp, who's the, uh, the lead for shared health. Then on the 18th, uh, Councilor Morio, uh, uh, myself and yourself, your worship, met with the LP Mill people by uh, Zoom. And what a remarkable place out there, man. Like uh, 235 plus five people working full time, a couple, three, 400 people working. And everything looks rosy for their diversifying of their products. So uh, where would we be without LP? Then on the 22nd, I had the opportunity to go to the Red Road uh, Compass just to stop in and uh, see uh, what they do there and uh, they feed a lot of people and they provide them warmth and clothing and uh, yeah they get you can take uh, they're looking for mitts right now at need and uh, i was there earlier tonight and i would say there's 25 people in there getting a hot meal uh, behaving perfectly like anybody should of course and handful of volunteers working and uh, that's a nice place we should stop in. If we have extra clothes, I encourage you to, uh, to drop them off there. I believe Tuesdays from four to eight, and I think possibly Thursday also they're open. Then we had a town meeting that same day, and the number one issue as always has been crime. We're looking at how to uh, get that under control. Looking forward to the meeting on March 17th. Uh, talked about flood preparation, and I'm sure we're going to do a mock disaster tabletop one of these days. And uh, so we're moving, a big deal, and I want to thank uh, Councillor Bobbin for taking me around town and showing me where all that snow goes. It's more exposed. There's a lot of snow and they need a lot of space. We also talked the possibility of closed circuit TV being placed within the community. I want to thank uh, Councillor uh, Delorey for that one. And there's a possibility of having closed circuit TVs throughout the town. They can be monitored by laptops in the COPP cars, like the cars, hypothetically, but they can be monitored at home by the community as a whole. So it's something we're talking about and hopefully we'll follow up on that. Then on the 26th, I went to the Albert Sharker and Friendship Center activity at the Ski Hill. And uh, what a wonderful group of people up there, what wonderful things they do. And also, my wife and I took the opportunity to drive down and look at the new chalet. Holy smokes, you should get over there and have a look at that. It's, uh, it's evolving very quickly. 
Oh, thanks. Uh, just a couple of quick uh, comments. Uh, we spent the last two or three days working on Your time is up. Pardon? Your time is up. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I'm doing so much. Are you, suggest are you suggesting I don't do these things? Good, carry on. Right. Okay, uh, uh, Uriah and, uh, and team, and uh, Mr. Mora and Mr. Dolore, yourself, your worship, we've been communicating with Red River Community College, UCN, Swan Valley School Division, the MLA, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the dates are nearly chosen. The letters have gone out. I think all councils should see that letter today. It was sent out to them, and I asked for an RSVP. But I have to say that I think we're going to have to talk about some process to show some of our pals here and our peers what RSVP means. But uh, it's it looks uh, wonderful. I talked today to the uh, director of Red River Community College, and I talked to. Uh, Again, I'd like for he, uh, he hopes that maybe we can do something. And I'm still throwing around the idea, which I'm waiting for the replies from three counselors to invite a Crown attorney to our crime meeting on the 17th, there where they could answer questions specifically. Why does an individual, couldn't do specifics, why does an individual get let out of jail tomorrow? What is the charge for this? So, uh, hopefully that decision we made today, and I, I'm a little leery, I might have to leave quickly in the middle of this meeting, I might get called. And last but not least, I would encourage council to consider the possibility of wearing my yellow and my blue, which you recognize, you all recognized earlier, our Ukrainian community. I'm going to ask council to consider donating $2,000 to the Canadian Red Cross, and of that $2,000, the federal government will match it for $4,000 in total. And that could go to the Ukrainian aid program through the Canadian Red Cross. So I think it's exemplary. But if I disappear, I would encourage uh, somebody else. To, I don't know. We would have to make. I'd have to put that in as a motion, would I not? Definitely. You would. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, I would ask uh, Mr. Poole to write that down as a concept to be voted on at our next meeting, please. Two thousand dollars to the Canadian Red Cross, matched by the federal government for four thousand total to the Ukrainian humanitarian aid. And that's it, so, so uh, pretty busy. Thanks, Councilor White. Hang in there, <clears throat> uh, Councilor Morio. Um, I guess while away, uh, I zoomed in on last Tuesday's Committee of the Whole meeting, um, where a good chunk of the meeting was dealt with by going through our budget, uh, which is well on its way. Um, and then last night, uh, the General Government Committee met with Thomas Bozeman for uh, purchase services. And I had uh, emailed um, the administration for uh, an in-camera report on the PIMJAG. So I don't see it on the agenda, but if uh, Council wants a quick report from our last update meeting with CMC Canada, uh, you can get that. Okay. That's all for me. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Friesen. I uh, also attended the budget meeting that we had, and uh, we were supposed to have a community's care meeting today, but there were so many councils that it's been put off till next Monday. And I also had a look at the chalet on Thunder Hill, and it is very nice. That's it. Okay, thank you. Deprimator on toning. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd give you a play-by-play uh, -play on on my on my week, but uh, I know that Councillor White uh, will be having a personal call with Nature shortly, so I'll keep mine <laughs> mine short and sweet. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to uh, to Mr. Harvey and administration um, for dealing with issues in regards to snow um, and snow clearing and other issues that have come up and I appreciate the prompt replies and the prompt answers that uh, I receive as a counselor when asking those questions so I appreciate those um, sometimes when I don't reply back to you please know that it's not uh, that I'm offended or anything I just my my days are often uh, get bombarded pretty quick so uh, thank you for that um, March 17th, just a reminder, is that uh, the meeting that we do have scheduled at the Legion Hall, and please come out and attend that. Um, for myself, I did have a RISE meeting. I think I did share with Council, but uh, just to uh, 
share again. Uh, two people showed up to that uh, rise meeting again. I'm not sure if there were other reasons. So it was mitigating circumstances for certain individuals, that type of thing. But um, two individuals from the committee showed up. The direction um, is to present um, what um, what it would look like for um, each contributing council. What what their share of the uh, lost my train of thought the share of uh, of uh, of funds in the in rise would be if that was to disband so that'll be a discussion or uh, information coming forward and a discussion at our g next g4 meeting did have a planning district meeting yesterday um, I did think it was by Zoom. I didn't realize that we were uh, allowed to be there in, in person, but uh, um, that happened. I think Mr. Deloria can explain further on that uh, when it's his turn. Also, uh, just uh, in regards to what is happening around the world, your worship, you alluded to it, and thank you, Councillor White, for wearing your blue and, blue and yellow, and uh, there are some issues going on in Ukraine as we see. Um, on the news with versus Russia, so uh, it makes me grateful and thankful to live where I do live, and uh, that we get to enjoy the freedoms that we that we do have. So uh, blessings to the Ukrainian people, and I and I wish uh, nothing but hope and support for that to come to an end soon. Naibo balahos slovit Ukraino. So a little bit of my Ukrainian coming out there, but uh, I'm a little rusty as well. Thank you very much. That's my report today. Thank you. Councilor Deloria. Uh, had a library board meeting. Um, got to welcome two new board members to, uh, to the board. Uh, Nikki Ballard, who is the town of Swan River's uh, second citizen rep, or one of our two citizen reps, and Bev Poland, who is a citizen rep from Swan Valley West, so our board is finally back up to full capacity. Um, I was, I don't want to say re-elected, I guess reacclaimed as, as chair of the library board. Um, uh, and we started working on our budget, and I guess I just wanted to uh, uh, bring forward the fact that I think this is the first time, and I'm going to say it probably 20 years, that the amount given to the li libraries uh, from the province um, has has increased that we got about a twenty percent increase. So it was, it was about wow. It's a it's a, a twenty at least ten yeah. at least ten years. Oh, I think it, it was longer yeah. than that. Yeah, but it was a twenty percent increase. So it's a it's, uh, it's uh, will impact our budget greatly. So so we're appreciative of that over at the library board. Um, had a budget planning meeting here with the town. It's kind of my favorite time of year. I don't know maybe. I maybe I hang out with my accountant brother too much or something, but uh, uh, I always like uh, going over the budget. And uh, I guess I just want to shout out to uh, administration, uh, Mr. Poole, Mr. Kanita, all the all the other department heads. Um, you know, you put together a tight budget. Of course, council always wants more, um, but uh, but thank you guys for for your work on that. Um, and then we had a planning district meeting last night. Uh, looks like we did we did some budget planning there it's not finalized but it looks like uh, our portion will only be going up it'll be going up slightly only due to the fact that it's based on development permits so that's an increase that I, I can't really complain about if we're, if we're having more development that's a good thing for us I don't mind paying more with that if that's the cause because that means we're uh, we have development happening in town so um, it's only a slight increase coming coming from the planning district but uh, uh, we'll, have, we'll have that finalized probably uh, at our next meeting. Other than that, uh, that is it for me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Councilor White, did you have something? Just trying to uh, get uh, Deputy Mayor to the closing before you move on there. Uh, Deputy Mayor, is tomorrow the uh, Southern Valley Business Consortium meeting at 10? Um, not that I'm aware of. Just let me double check my. I didn't get no invites. I don't think so. It is not no, and that yeah. that meeting I have nothing scheduled for that. I think that the next meeting for I 
I don't even see it in my calendar, but I can promise you it's not tomorrow, Councillor White. And when you find where it is, can you let me know and also provide me the link to connect? Absolutely, I will. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, for myself, I guess kind of a repeat from some, uh, we did get the opportunity to meet with the uh, Municipal Minister, Eileen Clark, uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and uh, it was nice to have the Minister come uh, and spend some time with us to hear some of our concerns that we had that covered, obviously, the CT scatter and crime and uh, some other municipal issues. So uh, definitely was good to, to get her ear and, and spend uh, a good, valuable amount of time. Um, sure. I have uh, received some word that uh, Mr. Um, uh, Gertson is, they're working on a meeting with the Justice uh, Minister. So uh, we'll see, hopefully soon, an uh, opportunity to meet with uh, the Justice Minister. Um, I think Councilor White had mentioned that we did get a chance to meet with the uh, Liaison Committee uh, with Louisiana Pacific. And I think he alluded to the fact that it's a pretty well machine out there and, and some of the things that they had uh, discussed in, in there and, and what they're uh, working on, their, their goals. But, uh, you know, they, I think they talked about 20 new hires in 2021. Uh, they have had no recordable injuries in 2021. Uh, so indicating it's a pretty safe place to work. And, uh, and then some of the waste, the wood ash, they're talking about that and how they used uh, that on some uh, farm uh, land to get rid of club root in canola. So that was pretty interesting uh, information that they had uh, shared with us and uh, and they're just chugging along there as, as they are, but uh, a good uh, uh, good organization that we can have in this valley, in my opinion anyways. Um, I guess from there, I guess last, last night we had a chance to meet with Minnetonas Bozeman, some representatives to discuss our shared service for 2021 and 22. Uh, they heard what our offer is where we're at right now, and uh, they'll take it back to their council and hopefully we hear from them. I think we have something planned for the 23rd to, uh, to meet with them, and, and hopefully we can get this nailed down as soon as possible. <clears throat> and we did have some brief discussion on... Uh, fire protection and, and and the continuation of discussing the possibility of have a uh, valley-wide fire department. So uh, we'll see where that goes, but it's not an easy thing to get going, but we definitely have some will there, uh, you know, moving ahead. Next uh, Monday, remind everybody, that is the G4, and uh, that will be in Mountain, so we'll have to make arrangements for our band to... Uh, Take us up there so i'm assuming that most of us are attending but you should maybe let uh, mr Poole know or uriah know that uh, if you're not or uh, be part of the pickup schedule and then uh, something that we'll be talking to uh, uh, camera about and that is a meeting that uh, uh, we had a, the other night or yesterday what a about a potential business or, or production facility in the Swan River Valley. So uh, we're pretty excited about that and I'll be talking with council in camera about that uh, tonight. So that's it for myself and I don't know if Mr. Poole has anything that he wants to report, but you have it now, so. I do, uh, just getting our, sharpening our pencils on our, our budget. I know we'll be, we heard, even though I wasn't here, we heard council's direction, so manager will be moving to uh, <coughs> Our next meeting, everybody should be uh, in attendance so we can get a good run at the budget. Uh, regarding the town hall, I do have a question on this item. Is is uh, We do have a request from the business consortium to add to that agenda. So I do believe we need to discuss that agenda uh, as a council. I guess I can bring that up at the Cal meeting next Tuesday. Yeah. And we can go over there. Uh, and the question, Councillor White's question on uh, should the Crown Attorney attend, so if you have a comment on that, bring it to, to Tuesday's meeting, but we would like an answer on that sooner than later because uh, uh, notice will be needed. Councillor DeLaurier first. I, I guess just a comment on, on the Crown Attorney, you know, I would, I would caution against 
pushing this off till next Tuesday just for the fact that they're, they're uh, a provincial employee. Uh, they're going to have to get clearance from their higher ups in Winnipeg. They're going to want to see questions, agendas yeah. to get all that approved in, in the times that are provided. I think that decision needs to be made tonight, if not last week. So to push it off, uh, I think if we need to have a, a discussion on it, or I, I, I'm not sure, but I think we'd be, I think we'd be basically putting a nail in the coffin that they wouldn't be able to make it if we push it off till uh, till next week. Yeah, I, you know what? I know that Councillor White has uh, spoken some terms about this and and uh, the possibility of a PR person or whatever from that department, but I, I have no objections to it. You know. They they're gonna tell us what their uh, um, what their parameters are, what they could talk about when when they're there, or maybe they won't even attend at all. Councilor Morio, um, just uh, an FYI that since there's been a by election called in the province, I highly doubt the public oh, that's right. will come out and because the, the all public uh, or government employees are now, I guess I, I can't remember the term, but can't speak on anything. Yes. That's already delayed some of the presentations we've asked for from the office. Yeah, fire. That, that, that makes sense. They can't. Yeah. So, so because I, I don't know when when is the election. You know, I'm not sure. So, well, know. we could check into that. But does anybody have any uh, objections to that at all? If if we did reach out, I don't see none. So we can okay. reach out. We'll reach out. Okay. Yeah, you'll get their official response. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. All right, Councillor White, we're uh, we're gonna check into it. Okay, I'll follow up on it. Thank you. We will check into that. Moving on, just organizing. The fire chiefs organizing the OFC uh, for a mutual aid and uh, uh, a representative from Southern Manitoba to speak on amalgamating fire departments. That date is tentative for April sixth. So check your calendars and let us know. Uh, I know I've got. A, the Minnetonas Bozeman meeting last night, uh, the two representatives uh, basically requested that the fire chief uh, provide the invite to the neighboring municipalities uh, just for the reason that uh, I guess when we usually request <coughs> things of our neighbors, it's taken in spite, and, and this one will have no bearing to. <laughs> to where it came from but either way the the fire chief is is for it and uh he will send out uh, a drafted letter uh if april 6th does not work i need to know uh and we will discuss that development meeting uh in camera and just preparing town facilities for the lifting of the covid restrictions and i wanted to thank uh the managers and the employees for making that entire process over the past two years uh, pretty easy. We didn't really have a lot of major issues regarding uh, our policies with COVID. They weren't overly strict, but uh, just a thank you to the employees. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, moving on then to uh, where are we here? It's 8.1. The result of the town of Swan River sponsored the Swan Valley Employment Training Program for the 2022-23 contract year. Moved by uh, Councillor Delorier, second by Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Discussion? Councillor Bobic. What does that sponsorship mean in terms of dollars? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Mr. Harvey. That's the work crew. So the funding flows from the province. We just have to do some administration, but it's minimal for what we get. Yeah. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Resolved that six sets of firefighter turnout gear be purchased in this 2022 year from Rocky Mountain Phoenix at a cost of $26,000, including taxes to be paid by 2021 accumulated surplus, and further resolved that the purchase of the turnout gear in 2023 be skipped and resume in 2024. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. 
Discussion? Councilor Delorier? So normally we buy four sets a year, correct? Uh, it's yeah. an amount that he... Yeah, but for the last number of years, it's been four sets, yeah, yeah. Uh, usually around $13,000. So this year we want to buy six sets? According to the chief, yes, he's asked for six sets. And six next year we want to buy zero sets? Yes, he believes, the way he explained it to me is three per year, he can, he can come down. That's what he's asking for. I, I honestly did not question him on that, but uh, I know that this is a pricing issue. He's doing this to, to get a better price. Okay. Okay. Councilor Morio. Um, Chief Rodorczyk briefed me on this, and uh, since he wasn't sure he'd be able back in the meeting on time, but uh, uh, since the money is, um, is coming out of the surplus, um, Traditionally, it's four sets a year, but uh, right now, the dynamics of the department and the certifications, uh, we don't need uh, four sets next year, six are purchased this year. Um, so there'd be a savings of two turnout gears at this, this time. So, uh, and then the plan is to resume in 2024 back to the four sets of turnout gear. But uh, um, what he's asking for in this decision paper is uh, to go ahead to, uh, place the order prior to the budget being passed since it's uh, with all the supply change issue, it's a 35 week um, delivery as an estimate from when the order's put to uh, when they expect delivery. So, so he's asking for it to be get uh, permission to go ahead and place that order prior to the budget. So, but uh, traditionally it's, it's four that usually comes out of uh, is operating, um, but since of the surplus last year and administration's decision to pay it out of surplus and combine two years into one, drop two years because just a, there's no uh, the dynamics right now in the department that uh, uh, they don't need the full eight um, this year or next year uh, because the turnout gear that they have is still within its certification period. So, okay. Councilor Bobbitt. So if I'm under the impression that you're allowing for four every year and that's part of its budget, mm -hmm. so if you take this out of accumulated surplus, wouldn't he have four accumulated in his budget? Yeah, like it would be a savings in his operating budget that's, that's reflected exactly. in there. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at, so what I mean. If there's a budget for four, mm -hmm. what is the need? Why wouldn't we just take two out of accumulated surplus? I guess we could, but council uh, typically puts these uh, units on the taxes in capital, but still coming out of taxes. So uh, I, I guess that, like, like the chief said, the dynamics is that eight are not needed over the next two years. He feels six are. So. Yeah, I understand that, but I, I'm saying on on the budget side of it, he's gaining the price of four. Right, but the the op, the operational increases, like with the wages and that, are taking up that. Okay, that's so, what I'm getting. So at. his his yeah. operational budget would go be higher than what it would be, what's reflective in the draft budget so far. So the savings that are from the but uh, taken out of surplus is eaten up by his operational, like. Increases. Mr. Harvey. Well, normally it's on capital, right? Yeah, so this is this has nothing to do with taxes. taxes. So just instead of being on taxes, it's going on accumulated surplus. Okay. So that will be show up in the percentage of right. the tax increase is that those sets of turnout gear won't be going towards that increase. Because right. if it wasn't done this way, then they would be going towards that increase. But by using accumulated surplus, they're not going towards that. It, it's not going towards it, and, and typically, even though it does go towards a tax increase, it does not affect his operational budget because it is capitalized. Okay, so but the, you, you're putting this on time, but there's no, you're not starting reserve fund and dipping out of the reserve fund to pay for these every year? No, we, we proposed that to council, I think, three years ago, and the decision was, was these are needed in order to safely operate a fire department. Council would agree to give him four sets a year uh, in capital on taxes 
uh, as opposed to starting that reserve. That was the decision made at that time. Okay. Councilor Delorey. So looking back here in 2020, they came out of the capital budget. In 2021, they didn't. They must have came out of his operating budget. They're not listed in the capital worksheet in 2021's budget. Um, so I, I guess in the budget numbers we saw, were, were they in his operating or were they in the in the capital section? They were in the capital. Capital. Yeah, yeah capital. capital from now on. From now on, they'll be in the capital. Okay, as long as we were consistent and that way, I, 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 I think I understand where Councillor Bob was coming from. If, if his operating budget stayed the same this year now, and then all of a sudden, two years from now, they need to come back in, all of a sudden it jumps up by that amount. Right. Because, you know, oftentimes we don't see the nitty gritty of what's in there. So but I, I understand the concern, but if they're in the capital section of it, it's it's a lot more transparent. So I, I, it's really here nor there. Yes. CFO Gadita. <coughs> And in 2021, there was a provincial fire protection grant that covered the, the cost of the turnout gear. Thank you. Councilor Bonnet. So just to explain this a little bit more to me, so you're saying four gear per year, is that because of there's so much you need to replace every so often and that's, uh, that's the number that been acquired over the years is a four. There is a lifespan on. Yeah. Okay. No, nope. thank you. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10.1. Resolves the, the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28619 to number 28660 totaling $144,574.77 is listed on Schedule A. Payroll account checks number 5039 to 5046, totaling $90,207.27 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $725 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, just going through uh, the check explanation here, and it's just uh, just a query on our MPI. Did, would the town be getting a re rebate like regular people uh, on that? Like would our mass fleet, that should be a sizable check. CFO Benita, could you answer that? Does the MPI rebate go to commercial or I should say nonprofit companies? Uh, yes, the town got a uh, rebate already cool nice further all discussion nice. all in favor it's carried <coughs> bylaws 11.1 <clears throat> result of bylaw 3 2022 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 9 2004 as amended to rezone lots 1 2 and 3 from plan 59 267 from RS6 residential single family zone to RT residential two family zone be read a first time. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? I'll go ahead, Council Morio. Um, with that, I would just be voting in favor and just want to express my appreciation to the Manitoba VT Federation for actually acquiring lots that are been vacant ever since I've been in town here um, and putting development on them. So it's uh, great to see an organization that's uh, willing to invest a significant amount of dollars in our community and we have with our good working relationship with the partners there. Uh, hopefully we can continue with that and assist them in their uh, expansion in servicing the citizens of the area. So. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 11.2, resolve the bylaw 7, 2022, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 9, 2004, as amended to rezone lots 21, 237, block 3, plan 
2554 from ML Light Industrial to MH Industrial Heavy. Be ready first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3. Result of bylaw 8, 2022, to, to being a bylaw to establish a tax stabilization reserve fund, the read at first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.4. Result of bylaw 2, 2022, being a bylaw to repeal 10, 2018, be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Councilor Bobbick? Have you explained this a bit? Yeah, what is this? This actually was passed by mistake. So uh, we are repealing this bylaw. Oh, it's been a long time. <coughs> right, it was it was a mistake that uh <coughs> Right, the 1018 was superseded by 2020, but at that time, we did not repeal uh, this bylaw, 1018. So we were just going through the formal process of doing that. Thank you. Councilor Deloyer. So, so did bylaw 10, 2021 repeal 2020? Yes, it's just a sentence that's in that okay. bylaw. That okay, so it, the one, the 2020 20 was repealed. Yeah. Okay. And this is the procedures bylaw that governs how councils to yeah. proceed. Okay. It was just one sentence that was forgotten. Okay. Further discussion? I need oh. Tylenol. What's that? <laughs> I need Tylenol on that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. 11.5, result of bylaw 2, 2022, being a bylaw to repeal 10, 2018, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a recorded vote. Um, Recording you got it? I did not. Um, who, all in favor? Okay. And all was in favor except for Councilor White, who is absent. Okay, 13. Result of pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have this PMJAC report, Protective Services Apparatus, Fire Extinguishers, and I guess we can say um, Business Opportunity, I guess. Discussion? Or oh, sorry, move by. Um, You're moving it? I have discussion too. Okay. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion, Councilor Delorier. Yeah, I have one other thing to add in camera regarding. Uh, Conduct of council, uh, as far as uh, the budget meeting from last week, we had one thing that we wanted to bring up. Okay. Conduct of council? It's not really conduct, it's we'll similar. Play. Okay. Discussion? Budget. Budget. Yeah. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. We'll take a recess. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.43 p.m. Moved by... Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Good night. <laughs>